Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I want to talk you through free from claims, what makes them allowed and when aren't they really allowed because they're misleading and untruthful to a consumer. Well first things first, this topic's come up because there's been a technical document on cosmetic free from claims that's about to become in full force from July 2019 in the EU. Now the principles of this document are nothing new. In fact, all around the world, cosmetic products are supposed to comply with the definition of cosmetics. They should not be misleading to a consumer about properties they do or do not have, and they should have truthful advertising. Unfortunately, companies don't always get this right. And one of the biggest examples we see is all the misinformation on the internet about all these so-called cosmetic chemicals that will give you cancer or cause some other health issues. So let's take a look at the very first free from claim that's out there, and that is that cosmetic products cannot say they're free from a chemical that is not permitted in a cosmetic in the first place. For example, you can't be claiming that your product is free from mercury or free from corticosteroids because they're both prohibited chemicals in a cosmetic product. So that is misleading and untruthful to a consumer who simply doesn't know better and maybe thinks that these chemicals can be found in cosmetics when they're in fact prohibited from being included in cosmetics in the first place. So you can't allude to a product being free of an ingredient that it can't contain in the first place. Next, let's talk about a claim like free from allergens. Again, this could be considered misleading because some consumers will react to just about anything, which means we really can't say that a substance is free from an allergenic substance because it may impact someone. Next, we can't be claiming that a product is free from perfume if it contains any sort of aromatic chemical. So if your product contains essential oils, it is misleading to say it's free from perfume because those essential oils are fulfilling an aromatic function. It would be better to make a truthful statement such as free from synthetic fragrances or free from synthetic perfumes if that is in fact actually the case. Next. Let's take a look at the big one. This is parabens and preservatives. First of all, you can't be saying that your product is free from formaldehyde if you're using a preservative that is a formaldehyde releaser. You also can't be suggesting that that formaldehyde releaser is in any way harmful if it's used within regulatory limits, which if a cosmetic product is compliant, it would be, so we can't be implying any harm from the use of that preservative. But we can't be saying that it's free from formaldehyde in this case if it is using a formaldehyde releasing preservative. We also cannot be saying free from parabens because there's so much misinformation on the internet which means consumers put one and one together and think that parabens are therefore harmful for them. Now there's been extensive studies and a lot of regulations around the use of certain parabens and they are permitted within strict regulatory limits in cosmetic products. Therefore, cosmetic products can no longer carry the claim free from parabens because it's implying to the average consumer that parabens are in fact harmful after all. So we can't be implying harm from a permitted ingredient in cosmetics at any time. We also can't be saying free from preservatives if there is in fact an ingredient in that product that is helping protect that product from microbial contamination. For instance, we see some companies promoting their products as being preservative free because the material in that product that is performing its microbial protective function is also used for another purpose. So it might be used as a humectant or conditioning agent in that formula. But with these guidelines firmly in place, it makes it clear that if that ingredient or ingredients were removed from the formula, if that product would then start to grow microbial contamination, then that ingredient is clearly being used as a preservative. So you can't say it's preservative free. If you want to be making a preservative free claim, you'll need to support it with evidence like PET or challenge testing, which proves that even without that ingredient, the formula is still not going to grow microorganisms 
and then you can say it's preservative free. But if the presence of that ingredient or ingredients is protecting the formula from any sort of microbial contamination, it is misleading and untruthful to suggest that the product is preservative free when there very clearly is at least one ingredient that's providing microbial protection. In other words, it does contain an ingredient that is providing a preservative function and it's misleading and untruthful to suggest it doesn't. So when can you make a free from claim? When is it okay to say that a product is free from certain ingredients? Well, you can when it is a truthful claim that doesn't imply harm from an otherwise permitted cosmetic ingredient. We use the parabens example to make it really clear that it's not okay to say free from parabens because that would be suggesting there's potential harm from using a permitted cosmetic ingredient. But if you had a vegan looking for a cosmetic, for example, it's perfectly acceptable to say that your product is free from animal products, if it is in fact true, so that they can make an informed purchasing decision. It's also okay where products differentiate based on what they do or do not contain, where fear mongering and safety is not part of the message. For example, traditional mouthwash formulas used to contain a bit of ethanol. Now consumers can make a choice to purchase alcohol-free mouthwash. So in that case, you could say free from alcohol if it is in fact free from ethanol and that's helping a consumer make an informed purchasing decision. Some consumers don't like the smell of acetone in their nail polish removers. So again, you could say that a nail polish remover is free from acetone if it in fact is because it's helping a consumer make an informed purchasing decision. It's not saying there's anything wrong with ethanol. It's not saying there's anything wrong with acetone. It's not saying there's anything wrong with animal products. It's simply helping the consumer make an informed choice without inducing any fear about permitted cosmetic ingredients. Now, it's interesting to note that while these guidelines have been put out, they are not technically legally binding. However, come July 2019, the EU courts will be using this technical document to help make their decision on whether advertising of personal care products is misleading and untruthful or otherwise breaches fairness about cosmetic claims. As a cosmetic chemist and having worked with these types of materials for years and having seen the vast amount of misinformation on the internet about the supposed harm of certain cosmetic chemicals, I am for one overjoyed to see that there are some really clear guidance about these free from claims and will hopefully see an end to some of the ridiculousness that is out there. Gone are the days where we were being sold snake oil. Now we have a lot of science and safety behind the products we use and enjoy every day. And as consumers, we should be making our informed purchasing decisions based on the benefits of a product rather than being scared to use cosmetic ingredients which have been proven safe to use within regulatory limits. We'll also start to see a ripple effect come across the globe from the use of these EU technical guidelines. They provide courts with really clear guidance on what is considered acceptable and is considered misleading, untruthful and unfair to help regulators around the world judge cosmetic advertising in a more appropriate manner and especially help consumers purchase what they're looking for without any sort of fear or repercussion about potential harm from using perfectly safe cosmetic chemicals. I'm sure this video is gonna spark debate, so you can contact us and get a copy of these technical guidelines. It's not about me telling you the rules, this is from the EU regulators and a technical document that their courts will be using to judge fairness of advertising of cosmetic products. And about time too. But you can read the full technical document for yourself. Just contact us. We're happy to give it to you free because it's what they'll be using in the near future. So now let's get back to the good stuff and that is creating amazing personal care products that really deliver on their promises without inducing fear. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't shoot the messenger, I'm simply passing the message on. I didn't make the rules, but it's about time we had a fair and level playing field in this industry where so many great things can be created. 
make sure you subscribe to get notifications about all our videos and leave any questions or comments below. Remember, contact us for free access to those technical documents so you can read what the regulators have to say about this for yourself. Happy formulating.